Right, so that was one the next bloody day. Yeah, it didn't happen. Surprise, surprise. So we're going to attempt again. Now, problem I've always had with this mash tun, because it's so bloody big, unless you're doing a huge grain bill, you do get a little bit of temperature loss. Now, I haven't got anything to stick in the top other than a bit of foil over the top to try and limit the um, heat going up into the empty space. I'm going to use my biggest heater tray. Hopefully it will be on long enough while the water's warming up to try and uh, keep the base warm so that uh, it will help maintain mash temperatures and uh, if not well we'll just sort of learn from this one and what I might do is just reduce the volume of the mash on a next brew and if it does start losing temp I'll just add up to the correct volume or make the difference up with uh, with the batch sparges. I don't fly sparge with this even though I did build a sparge. So we've got one fermenter. Um, I'm going to have to fill that up with something because there was a load of mould growing in it. I think the last I had a wash in there and that had been left a while. And uh, I dumped it out because there was mould growing in it. So I'm going to give this stainless steel one its first outing because that will fit in the firm fridge which I've had set up from last night that's now it's been running all night so uh, I've got to clean a couple more fermenters out because I want to do another kit brew um, I have one ready for another possible grain brew um, if I can get one in and uh, one or two for that old gal Ooh. Just weighed out the grains and the HLT took a shit. I had them prepped for last night as you know from my ramblings earlier on. Plugged it in. Oh, I can hear the thermostat clicking in and out. Can't hear a hum or a hiss though. And check the fuse, check the plug outlet in case that's duff. I thought I know. I'll stick it on the old power monitor. And it wasn't pulling any amps. This one is. Luckily I had plan B, the backup HLT strash boiler. So um, I've got that on the separate circuit. That's on the, on the 50 amp feed for that. So we will wait. I'll crush the grains now. And uh, here's the old bag sealer. And seal them back up. Well, you couldn't fucking make it up, could you? A brew day always goes tits up, doesn't it? Just went to use the brand new, never used before bag sealer. Put the bag in, push it down, little micro switch there, as you can see, it's in fucking bits. Nothing happens, dead as a doornail. Check the fuse again, no, try it again. Adjust the heat sensor, LED's not coming on. Um, it was about to unplug it, I just tipped it on its side, and poof! Out goes all the electric, because the fucking live wire has either just shorted on the case, it's blown it to kingdom come. This, it looks like the uh, half arse wankers didn't even bother putting a spade connector on it. They just dabbed a little bit of solder on there. The other one's got a connector on it, but the bracket that attaches it to the base of the spring has snapped off. And then it's shorted out on the case because it's not insulated. Oh, there we go. Not even a decent solder joint. So, I'll have to come back to that, I think. Make a new bracket and um, put a bleeding spade connector on it with an insulation. Tits. Well, it's not too bad. That worked. Only lost a degree over the full mash. I've gone over the 60 minutes. How far, I don't know, because I forgot to turn the bloody alarm switch on. So the timer was merrily counting down, but um, when he got the naught, it didn't literally beep beep because I've been fucking around with this thing. The bracket broke off, this little lever comes down on the bag sealer, like so there. But you need it to go obviously shut so that it then energises the heater coil. But what it was doing, I've put a little bracket here. 
I've had to bend this piece back because to get it to close you actually push the switch and it's only a little plastic bracket snapped off but not only that the neutral is then gonna push against the casing uh, so when the insulation wears away you're going to get a short neutral to earth and I think obviously when it broke off the well not neutral sorry the other switch live confusing me because in their infinite wisdom they've used blue wires as well um, yeah so the uh, circuit comes in that's your live live back out so when your switch is energized that's going to be live pushing against the casing so I've had to rejig it, use a bit of bracketry. This stuff, you get it on a roll from Till Station, it's bloody brilliant stuff. Recommend you keep some of that in your toolbox. And as it is, it makes contact now and it does it at the point, which is what it's supposed to do. So we'll see how long that bloody lasts. Anyway. Hey, get some sparging done. Yeah, I need a P2 as well now. <laughs> well, that's the first one. Just got to do the back sparge. He's now running around. I was running clouds, making a little bit of clouds, pulling the last bits through by dropping this nice little funnel I picked up. As you can see there's, there's only just now starting to pull a little bit of debris through on the last, last 4A. I will call it squits at about now. Well, it's running fairly clear. Not too much uh, coming through. Got the grain bed settled and done its job. Didn't get stuck. And it is quite powdery as you can see. My top one was four seconds, which was a wee bit too long. It was just a little bit of melting through. So I just dropped it down three seconds. It seems to have done the trick. It's got a built-in timer, so um, let's have a go. I'll just screw that up a bit. It's a bit. Um, it needs to be flat. So just a three-second burst, and uh, help to keep it fresh. And at least if you drop it, your grain's not going to spill everywhere. Even if you do have to spend half an hour rewiring the bleeding thing. This is the one big advantage of having a dedicated brew space. My own sink, nice big one, and now wash out the fermenter because I've used that to capture the wort and then transfer it once this was empty into what it was the HLT and is now going to be a brew kettle. As long as it doesn't go pop on the way, let's not tempt fate. What else could go wrong today? Well, we've just nursed to a boil, so we'll uh, chuck in the ops. We've just been uh, waiting for that. I've got a multitasking. We've got a pump to pack what we sold. That's got to go there. We've got a box there. Got to cut that off for the waste water from the chiller. And we've got to sort this out. Right, back in the mosey. Well, we're just coming up to halfway through the boil. It's going quite well. Fan's almost keeping up with it, it's not too bad. I have put a, uh, a foam filter in, I know a lot of the guys got these having the same trouble. It's condensation forming on the outside, it's not so much what's dripping back through. Because I put this um, like scotch mist, that's what we got now. <laughs> it's 100% humidity in here, but uh, yeah, it's like a scotch bright pad. You can buy it on eBay, it's fogging up, it's not as foggy as it looks. The reason is, if you can see it, 100% or 99% humidity in here. So it's a tad, tad warm and sticky. 19.3 on the on the ink bird, but uh, quite humid, shall we say? Well, excuse the noise. Chill is in, the uh, new Beerline old hand pull pump hose is now serving as an outlet. I was going to check some Irish moss in but that seems to be uh, 
maybe a little bit more than Irish moss growing in there. So um, I think we'll give that a miss. No point with it really being a wise bear, not too much to worry about really. No point putting bear bright in. Right, she's going well so far, we've got 12 minutes left. A little bit of condensation just after that last cut off. It then started leaking out of there, but um, yeah, it's manageable. Not ideal, but uh, we'll have to come up with something else eventually. Yeah, let me pick it up. Can't say it's still too foggy in here. It's been on more than about a minute. Now 15 mil copper chiller works a treat. Only a single I've got up here. I can double them up for a bigger pot. As you can see, live in real time. Won't be long before we're uh, lobbing it in the fermenter. Right back in a little while. Oh, that's better. Oh, I've got bloody gag. That beer is giving me indigestion. Right, we're down to 23.9, 0 0.8. And we've sterilised the old funnily filtery thing. So we can use it once again to filter, because I didn't use a hot sock or anything in there. I chucked them straight in. So we'll use that to uh, post boil filter. Handy bit of kit this was. A little find on eBay. It's had multiple uses for the filter in the mash, boil. I take the uh, filter screen out and it used to fit on my little hand mill and use it as a hopper as well. Well, it's a wrap. Ooh, the old shelf's bending a bit. I haven't cut a bit of wood for that, but uh, a bottle of Augustina will do for an airlock. I put a blow off tube in here because it's too tall. So that's the bed. A wacky reading again because it's saying 26 but I chilled it and I can't trust them. But uh, when I pitched the yeast it was 17. <laughs> anyway, we've had to take the uh, tap off the boiler because there was a few ops bunged in and then the uh, screw had disappeared off the end of the washer. And um, I was getting a few bits of washer in the... Um, when I've done the mash, so uh, I'll chop that out for another one, same as I did the other one. And uh, the screw turned up in the hops. I mashed through that lot by hand three times, I was about to give up and chuck it out. And I heard the dunk. Oh well, another job. So we've got to clear that crap up tomorrow, I've vac packed the hops, well that probably didn't do them any good because they weren't vac packed before but um, actually that one doesn't seem to pull a very good seal I suppose that's the air come back and out of the packaging and uh, still warm got to sort that bloody lot out see if the dogs want any um, make sure the thingy's unplugged yep. Right, I'm going to call it a wrap because my back is screaming me and it's painkiller o'clock time. Right, catch you on the next one.